guys, it's Kelly from Cards by Christine here with you on a Monday night for Paper Pumpkin Live. So let's find the live and then let's chitty chat. It is a cold Monday. Let's see here, end of March here. So um, March, I think anywhere is always just a, a crazy month weather wise, but it is cold. And I worked from home today and typically, um, you know, I spend a lot of my work day in our living room area and I'm staring out our big picture window thinking, wow, it is gorgeous outside. Like the sun was so bright and shiny. All the snow has melted away and stuff like that. But dang, it was cold, like 30 degrees and I'm just, I'm over it. <laughs> I'm ready for the spring. We had, um, we had a glimpse of spring, some 60, upper 50, lower 60, even upper 60 degree days a couple of weeks ago. And I'm ready for that back. <laughs> so hello, hello, hi Deb, hi Kathy, hello Laura, hi Cindy. Thank you so much for joining. Also, thank you Cindy for sharing. Um, it's a fun paper pumpkin night, so um, anyone can tune in and enjoy some fun crafting and... Um, creating and my comedy antics that, <laughs> you know, I should be a comedian. No, I, I definitely should. Hello, Doris and Feline. Hi, Karen. Thank you so much for joining and sharing. Hope you guys all are having a wonderful Monday night. Hello, Jamie. Cold here too, but it was great to see the sun. I agree. As much as I wish it would have been warm enough to like go outside, the kids wanted to go outside and like, no, <laughs> it's not as nice as it looks. Um, but it was great to see the sun. I agree. Um, hello, Susan, Linda, Mary Jo, Randy, Southwest Michigan. Awesome. Coming in from all over the place. I am so excited. So I don't know. Hi, Chris. Hi, Kathy. Um... I don't know if you guys have all seen the Paper Pumpkin kit or not yet. It is gorgeous. I pretty well knew that it was going to be from all of the peaks that they were giving. Um, wow, it's very nice. And once a year, usually in March, I'm almost positive it's always in March, they give a free bonus stamp set um, in celebration of their anniversary or their birthday, as I think they sometimes call it. Um, so in this kit, there's the normal paper pumpkin kit, the smaller stamp set, um, but then also there's a full size photopolymer set that coordinates, so it's it's really pretty. Um, and I love it corresponds with Beyond the Horizon, Over the Horizon, I can't remember what it's called, but um, it corresponds with that bundle or suite and um, I just, I love that watercolor look and I'm, I'm very pleased with the sneaks and, and what we've got coming for this. So it's beautiful and um, we've gotten some previews for the next one as well that I'm pretty excited about. So I think they were, um, so last month was the animals, those crazy animals. Um, and so I think it was a, a positive swing <laughs> for this one and the next kit that um, I'm really enjoying. So wow, I missed on a bunch of comments. So hello, hello to everyone that's tuned in. Um, Chris does not have any extra sets left. She did have extra sets except for um, they're all sold already. So I think once people started to see it, they got excited about it and, and snatched them up. So um, Linda, I think a bunch of people don't have them yet, so I would wait maybe another week or so. Um, I don't know if you get tracking information, if it can tell you anything on your tracking information, um, but I did kind of look in some paper pumpkin groups that I'm in as well to kind of get some inspiration for the alternative, and, um, I've noticed that there are others that haven't received it yet, so I'd maybe give it another week, um, the mail has been delaying. So we always schedule our paper pumpkin live at the end of the month to give time because um, you have until the 10th of the month to subscribe for the current kit. 
And then once they know how many they're sending and where they're sending them to, they start to send them out. And then, um, you know, it's been getting. So, like, obviously the 10th of the month was 20, like, I don't know, two, two, two and a half weeks ago. Um, and there's times where we're like, okay, are we, are we still going on this live? Like, we don't have the kit yet. And it comes just in time. So, and it definitely depends where you're from as well. Um, how far from the central hub the kit is traveling. So, yeah, hopefully most of you have your kit. If you don't, just kind of tune in, follow along, see what's coming for you. Um, and hopefully you get it soon. <laughs> so... I got a notice that your kit was delayed. Okay, that's nice that they sent that out. Hello, hello, Cheryl and everyone else that has tuned in recently. So how are we all doing on this Monday? <laughs> I hope everyone, um, oh, lack of shipping trucks available. Yeah, that's another problem. I have, um, I've been seeing the lack of people, the lack of employees hitting closer and closer and closer to home, um, everywhere, everywhere's hours are changing. The pharmacy, I stopped the other day at the pharmacy, um, had to take Jake and had a double ear infection and coming out of town after the doctor's appointment, the pharmacy still wasn't open. And I was like, Oh my goodness. So I had to leave because I had to get him home and then get off to work. And so it's just, um, the labor shortage is affecting everyone. It's crazy. Um, yeah, so I hope everyone is doing well this fine Monday. Um, I have a great but busy week ahead, a busy couple of weeks ahead, and I cannot believe how close we are to Easter already. That snuck up on us. Um, my son's second birthday is coming up in the middle of April, and followed by Easter. So his birthday is the 14th and then Easter's, I think the 18th, 17th. I don't know. They're very close together. And then, um, spring, spring is here. I'm so excited. So my, I think my days are just going to get busier and busier and busier. Oh no. Patsy's not having the best day. I hope you can check in for a couple hours, get your mind off of all of the things, and hopefully turn it around a little bit. So, I think we've already got 47 on, so why don't we go ahead and crack open our box? So, for anyone that doesn't have a kit or um, hasn't seen any of the peaks yet, Here's your first look at what we've got. I love opening the paper pumpkin and just releasing its beauty. So fun. Okay, so. Oh my goodness. The box right off. Hello, Susie. Thank you for joining. Right off the bat, the box gets me so excited. Um, if you have been following Cards by Christine for any amount of time, um, I think I've been doing Technique Thursday for a year and a half, if not close to two years. You will know, because you've heard me say it on multiple occasions, that I just love watercolor. Um, I I don't know. I just... It's beautiful to me. So this box is so pretty. I am thinking about repurposing it in some way, shape, or form. I don't know how or what I'm going to do with it, but this is just too pretty <laughs> not to. All right. So right off the bat, here's what we got. Misty Moonlight is our stamp spot, stamp and spot um, this time. Such a beautiful color. I love it. We've got a beautiful um, kind of woven ribbon in what I'm guessing is pale papaya. Here's a big thank you. We're so grateful for all of our paper pumpkin subscribers. So we decided to include not one, but two stamp sets. Um, and there's so much more like paper pieces and embellishments that perfectly coordinate with the new Horizon Suite collection in our January to June mini catalog, which means even more 
exclusive elegant watercolor designs curated by our in-house in artists just for you. We can't wait to see how you take the kits and your creativity beyond the horizon. Ooh, it would make a cute keepsake box. I really love that. Hi, Holly. Hello, Arliss. So this is an example of something that you could create with the exclusive bonus stamps. So I love, you'll see the big um, flower image with, it's a two-step stamp where you've got the solid image and then the detail images to stamp on top in a corresponding color, coordinating color. I love these watercolor dots. So there's a cluster of three and then a bigger singular dot that they use to make the background. Um, and then the thanks stamp is from the paper pumpkin stamp itself or set itself. And then so are these die cut leaves, but very cool tag that they have here. Then on the back is a preview for next month. Change is beautiful. They're all, they always say that beautiful things take time, but with April's kit, you'll make beautiful creations in no time at all. So, um, I think I read on the website that this kit is nine cards. So I'm excited about that. I think it's really cool. It's an interesting sneak peek. Um, I also saw online, it looks like the card, oops, sorry. It looks like the card is kind of like a double flap card. I'm not sure. So some of the, um, some of the sneaks that they've been putting out have led me to believe that that's what, what's coming. When is the retired walkthrough? So I think Chris did a last chance walkthrough today. Um, you'll have to look in the, the timeline. Um, she was having internet problems and I still think she had the opportunity to sneak that in. So um, we'll look a little bit more at the stamps in just a little bit, but yeah, that's what I thought. She did it today. Okay, so in the box. Excuse my crumpling. All right. You know, you can have this nice, beautiful space, but there's never enough space. It's like I could have desks all around me. <laughs> okay, so even what I am just peeking through here is beautiful. Like I can't wait to open it all up and see what there all is. So, ooh, look at that. So now, these are the three cards that we're going to make today. Um, I love, so you can tell just based on all of the sneak peeks here that it totally corresponds with that Beyond the Horizon um, DSP pack. So cool. And then I love this, this emulates the box. So I'm real excited about that one. Um, so we've got glue dots and dimensionals always come with the kit. Then we've got these really pretty die cuts. Hello, Zena and Donna. Thank you so much for tuning in. Very beautiful mountains, um, just kind of a pattern and some leaves and some grassy elements. Then we've got some strips. This awesome, like, embossed piece. I don't know if you can see. Wow, that's really hard to pick up on there. You can see that texture. Some more die cut pieces. And then, of course, our card bases. So we've got all three of the hand-painted scenes. Okay. So, here are the envelopes, and spoiler alert, this is what is inspiring my alternative for you today. Very cool. I love it. Okay, so that's a peak. Oh, how did I forget? These are gorgeous. I love these rhinestones. They're so hard to describe, and the the photo is not coming in very well of it, but it's basically like a white with iridescence on it. And I love them so many times. It has happened recently that I like 
swoon over the embellishments that come in Paper Pumpkin. And I like really, really, really want to write to Stampin' Up! and tell them to release them. <laughs> because they're just so pretty. Okay. I agree, Darcy. So pretty. Yes. And for any confusion, Chris was having major internet issues today. Um, so she, I think, had to back out of what she was trying to do and then came back in when, when the internet was a little more stable. So you can always catch, excuse me, you can always catch the replay of that if you missed it. So let's get started. Lots of intricate little pieces. I'm not going to punch these out yet because I'm going to stamp on them before I punch them, I think. Um, but we're going to start with one of these just beautiful shapes. I don't know what shape it is. Hello, Penny. Hi, Chris. Hello from the upstairs. That reminds me of an Adele song. I love Adele. I went through a big Adele kick. I'm gonna go ahead and punch all of these out when I am just sitting here getting started. Um, these laser cuts are so delicate. I want to be very careful with them that I don't break them. So excuse me while I mute for a little bit. Yes, Judy, those are, the white dots are glue dots. So um, every paper pumpkin kit comes with all the supplies that you need to get your cards made, even if you have no supplies um, or are not even a sampler. I've gifted some of my paper pumpkin kits in the past, um, either if they didn't inspire me or if they really spoke to me um, for who I thought they would be perfect for. So, um, the first time you subscribe to Paper Pumpkin, you get a block. It is the same size as the D block. It doesn't have the exact, um, it doesn't have the exact, like, nice rounded edges. Um, but you still can use it, by all means, for your stamping. And then um, also comes with a stamp and spot and the stamps necessary and then all of the adhesives as well. So I usually won't use the glue dots. Um, usually I'll use my liquid glue, but in some cases like this intricate piece, um, I'm not going to get out my sponge and all that stuff to adhere it. So I will use the glue dots, but um, yeah, it's amazing. They give you literally everything you need. Oh, I hope your poochie's doing okay, Feline. Okay, so let's go ahead and start layering up. I just love what they've got going on here. And to be honest, with this beautiful watercolored background, this card is going to come together in no time. And that's what I really like about this um, the DSP and the stamp set and all of that good stuff. Oh, I feel so bad covering this up. It's so pretty. So I, they have it down here kind of at where the water meets the land. Um, and then off to the right just a little bit. So it hangs beyond the artwork. Just a small little detail, um, to help elevate the card. Then on the back of this piece, they do show to use glue dots, but I, I take back what I said. I think I am going to use my liquid glue. Um, most of these places are thick enough that I can put just a nice dab of glue. There's absolutely nothing wrong with using glue dots. Um, obviously, it'll hold your project down, and that's all you're looking to do. Um, but glue dots and I don't always get along. So, all right, just throw some glue down in a glue or glue dots down in a couple um, strategic locations enough to hold it down and then go ahead and put it over here. I know. Terry, that is exactly what I was thinking too. Like I am struggling right now 
covering up that beautiful section down there. Okay, and then same with on here, just a little bit of glue or glue dots. And then I'm guessing the sentiment gets dimensionals. So we'll go ahead and get all of this laid down flat. Okay. This is an interesting piece right here. Um, I didn't know what to think of it at first. Um, obviously, it just gives a lot of texture to the card. Um, even the color, though. It's just, it's, it's growing on me. All right, so that's the layer. Now we need to grab our Paper Pumpkin stamp set. And this one says a little note um, on our sentiment piece. Let's see here on the bottom of my stack you could you know use any of the sentiments that fit so you could use congratulations um or any of the other ones thanks even fits um i guess i'm just gonna go ahead and do a little note i do always mention when i do paper pumpkin i bring my own block in just because i um I do like to, you know, the curved edges, it's just a little bit more comfortable of a block. I also bring in my own stamp pad. Again, there is nothing wrong with the pad that they give. It is just a little different than the normal pads, though. Hi, Christina. Thank you for joining. You barely missed anything. Um, the pads that you can buy from Stamping Up are a foam pad, and they stamp just a little bit cleaner, um, you know, I shouldn't even say that. I like how they stamp better than the um, woven pads, but that is um, kind of a personal preference thing. Um, so just get your sentiment all inked up and then center it on your sentiment strip. This is why I wanted to keep this one on the backing just as a little easier to maneuver and, and move around than that skinny little strip. So I do like how that's stamped. I'm just going to go ahead and clean my stamp and put it away right away. <laughs> Best practice there. I cannot tell you how many stamps I've lost on a messy stamp table. Um, they stick to everything and it is too easy for them to just walk away. So the extra 10 seconds that it takes to Clean it up and put it back is a good investment in the longevity of your stamps. Okay, so then punch it out. Go ahead and put dimensional. So I love Paper Pumpkin's instructions. They used to not be all in color and all that good stuff, but they've made great advancements to it. On the, the um, pieces that we already put down, you can see where they suggest you put the glue dots. And then these... Um, hexagon outlines are where they suggest you put the dimensional. So very intuitive for even the most novice of stamper. It's wonderful. Okay, so go ahead and put down your dimensionals. This would make a fantastic Father's Day card. I agree. All right, grab your little backers off the dimensionals and then go ahead and layer. Now, this is the same size, maybe just a little taller than this coral piece, and they kind of show it up and off to the left so that you're just getting a little peek of the coral out. Um, so I'm going to put it like there. That is it. <laughs> oh, just kidding. That is not it. We need embellishments, of course. And they show to have five embellishments and they always show where they suggest the embellishments to go. It's very hard to see on this one, 
but let's see if we can find them all. One, two, three, four. I'm really not finding the fifth one. Maybe, I, maybe it'll show up better on the card itself. One, two, three, four. Oh, five. Okay, so let's put them on there. Hopefully, it'll be easier for you to see once I have them on. So it looks like they coupled a big one and a small one here. A big one and a small one down here. Oh, these embellishments are so beautiful. For those of you that have the kit or have the kit on it on its way to you, just wait until you see how pretty they are. Anyone watching from Stampin' Up! Home Office right now, put in a petition. We want them. <laughs> okay, so here's the card. We've got big little, big little, and little is where they suggest them to go. And we'll go ahead and close up the card, which is the first step I should have done. Um, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> and here is your beautiful note card. It's not a note card. It's a full-size card. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so that is the first one. The next one is this gorgeous pattern that I was talking about. So let's get all of our stuff together for this one. Okay, so here is what I'm going to say first off about these cards so far. I love all of the layers. So pretty. Some of the color schemes are a little, you know, I am not exactly seeing, like, especially for this card that we're making right now. Not especially seeing the tie-in to coral. It's a pop of color. That's, I guess, what it is. Um, but I'm digging it. Speaking of which, we're going to bring in this coral piece. Then we're going to bring in the jaggy piece, which I think is um, Evening Evergreen. You guys are right. It is gorgeous, and I wish you could see it in person because it is a stunner. Okay, so... This is all layered. And again, full disclosure, I'm going to use my liquid glue. You absolutely can use your own. Sorry, I'm going to move some of my pieces. You can all absolutely use the um, glue dots that come with the kit. Nothing wrong with that. I distinctly remember years ago, Chris maybe would remember more than I, when we started using liquid glue and I was opposed to it at first, you know, just the tape runners, hi Nancy, were the thing that you used when you made cards. And I just, I didn't love it. I had a very hard time accepting until I came around to, hi Marsha, um, the benefits, really, honestly, after you've had a card that has been around the block a time or two and you've had a card fall apart because at least in our climate, maybe not in all climates, but in our climate, um, sometimes tape runner loses its tack after a while. Um, so I, I learned why we use liquid glue or why Chris started using liquid glue and I haven't turned back since and I love it for several reasons. Um, I feel like, so I, I'm actually a graphic designer by trade. That's what I went to school for. And I cannot tell you how true it is that every time you press print or send off a file to the printer, as soon as you press print or as soon as it starts printing, the Spelling error? I suck at spelling. <laughs> yes, I am using the Tombow liquid glue. 
like literally jumps off the screen at you. And <laughs> I just, I can't explain it, but it is so true. And um, so same with the liquid glue, like it gives you an opportunity to um, kind of finesse it for a couple of seconds before it's down for like good. And that little extra time is sometimes all you need to kind of massage it into place where it needs to be. So I went from being totally opposed to liquid glue to now um, it being my tool of choice. Yes, tape runner for the inside piece. Okay, I could see that. The funny thing is, I don't even have a tape runner anymore. Um, I can't even remember the last tape runner that I had. I mean, obviously it was through Stampin' Up, but it's kind of several <laughs> generations ago. Um, hi, Anna. But I, da, da, here's my piercing mat. Um, I just, I don't even own one anymore. I just use liquid glue. Now there are times that I wish I had one, but I pretty well um, am religiously a liquid glue user now. So that's just my thing. Um, it's anyone's preference. Whatever works best for you is what I hope you use. Okay, so during that spiel, I layered down all of my um, pieces and then I'm going to stamp. Good call, Cindy. I didn't know what you were talking about because for some reason it is in step three and I was putting the pieces down from step one and then step two is stamping. So I pulled the thanks, stamping thanks in misty moonlight on this beautiful piece of, why can I never think of this color's name? Oh, but da 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 da. Ouchie. Pale papaya. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, and let's make it straight. So, got my, there must be a spot on here that needs re-inking. Then, oh, maybe it just was how the light was hitting it. Okay, so we've got thanks. This card could absolutely use a bigger sentiment or any sentiment. Thank you, Deb. I just oh, really couldn't come up with that. To be honest with you, pale papaya is a difficult one for me. Um, I didn't know that I needed it. I didn't really like it real much per se until I got the peach set. Another set that if you've been watching for a while, you've heard my take on. Um, I don't really like peaches, although I'm starting to like them more than I used to. Um, but I just had to have that stamp set. It was so gorgeous. I've made some beautiful creations with it. Um, and there just isn't a good color besides pale papaya um, to stamp the peaches. I love using pale papaya and then stamping or sponging some... Um, Calypso coral to kind of highlight it. Beautiful. Okay, so here is the blue piece that um, Cindy told me about. I didn't, it wasn't even on my radar, <laughs> but that's okay. So again, throw a little adhesive down there and then center it behind. Just peeking out the edges. You can see here I got that a little crooked. Then we're gonna go ahead and put five dimensionals on the back. So three along the blue strip. And then, and I do apologize if I seem like a space case. I so let's see here, Friday, took my son into the doctor. He had a double ear infection. Um, we had a late night with him. He had a horrible cough and coughed for hours on end with no relief. Um, and then woke up in the middle of the night and again, coughed for hours on end. So he was just a miserable little dude for a while. But I'm telling you, my, my kids are too... <laughs> Polar opposites. 
I kind of love that about them. Um, sorry, I can't think and, and <laughs> do at the same time. But so took him in, got him taken care of, and then I think I've kind of gotten a little bit of a bug from them. But ah, that's okay. I had a pretty low-key day yesterday. It was crazy. My ambition didn't kick in until like 3.30 in the afternoon. And then it flooded me. <laughs> and I was cleaning the house until 11. And then I'm... I'm kind of very ambitiously trying to get, and I, I actually got a lot accomplished. I was very proud of myself. Um, but then you try to go to bed at 11 o'clock after go, go, going for hours, and it just doesn't work out that great. All right, so now I'm a little perplexed. Um, apparently, one of two things. Either I put the first piece at a bad angle, so this is the angle that I had it at. Apparently, the intention was to be more like this angle. Or you could have snipped it and put a piece down here more. But this little bit down here is supposed to be showing out and it's not. So my bad on that. I mean, there's so many other beautiful things happening that it's not really that big of a deal but I'm trying to frame my embellishments like they have it and these embellishments that I'm placing right now are supposed to be kind of nestled off that bottom leaf and well on my card that bottom leaf is not there <laughs> so no harm no foul just thought I would point that out yeah poor little guy the funny thing is so he's on Oh, um, moxicillin, I think is what it's called. It's the bubblegum tasting medicine. So obviously he has no care because it tastes delicious. Um, but he literally got him back home from the doctor, wasn't able to get the prescription. I kind of was talking about that before. Um, and it's like his energy came right back. It was crazy. So I kind of maneuvered my embellishments around this embellishment is supposed to be on the the coral piece but I didn't have enough room how mine kind of laid out so I put it up here um or it could go even down here somewhere I don't know it can go anywhere um the rule of thumb is that you usually use an odd amount of embellishments so I have my five on there, just not quite in the exact same space as the five that they did. It is beautiful. I'm telling you, these cards just make themselves so pretty. Hi, Diane. Thank you for tuning in. Nice to see you again. All right. Now, we're on to this one. So pretty. Ooh, and I love, this one uses this beautiful piece that I tried showing off before and it was really hard to, to catch on the camera. Ooh, this one is a lot harder to punch out, probably because of the dry embossing. But, check this out. Let's, see, let's catch the light. Wow, it's very hard to see. <laughs> there it is. Oh my goodness. Good evening, Linda. Thank you so much for joining. Hope you're having a wonderful Monday night. All right. Seeing as how I messed it up on the first one, let's go ahead and burnish. Oh, this is the one that has the ribbon. Interesting. Then the mountains and the greeny strip. Oh, this one... Okay, so I can't remember who, but someone before said um, that the first card was going to be, Hi, Doris. Thank you. It is gorgeous. I love these cards. If you didn't catch it earlier, Chris does not have any extras. Normally she does. She buys, oh, I don't know, like eight extra kits to sell if anyone missed the opportunity to get it. So that's kind of the thing with Paper Pumpkin is it's a bargain or a, a gamble. Sorry. <laughs> It is a bargain too, but uh, you don't know what you're going to get until that paper pumpkin box comes in the mail. They have been giving 
so many um, sneaks these days that you have a pretty good idea of what you're gonna get, um, but you really don't know what the cards look like until you get them. So Chris oftentimes buys extras for people that didn't subscribe or maybe skipped the subscription or have never been a paper pumpkin, paper pumpkin subscriber. Um, but they are already sold out. So as soon as Paper Pumpkin starts to put some of the videos out there or even anyone that subscribes, um, if people like them, they reach out to Chris and grab them right away. So if you missed out on them and want to get one, just know in the future that as soon as you start to see people kind of showing off what's in the kits, you can always reach out to Chris. You don't need to wait. I guess what I'm trying to say is you don't need to wait till the night of Paper Pumpkin Live to reach out if you want to get a kit. Okay, just trying to kind of see how they nestled these mountains together. And then, hi Sherry. Thank you so much for tuning in this beautiful Monday night. Although if you have been listening for 45 minutes, you already know that I don't think the weather here in Wisconsin is currently very beautiful. But I promise I'll be over it soon. It just needs some sunshine, some vitamin D. Latokia. I agree. I know there's another one or two kits that I remember thinking, I need it, I want it, I love it. The Christmas one. I think the Christmas one was high there, high up there on my um, list of beautiful cards. Huh, this is funny. They have the um, embellishments on this first picture, and I think it's an accident because they don't belong there. I mean, again, you can put them wherever you want, but step four is where they put the embellishments, and they only show that you put three, and they show you where to put them. So, if you're following along, the step one embellishments that they show on the card, don't do it. <laughs> it's a misprint. Okay, I will always be here for you. What a nice sentiment, and I love how these fonts are paired. Thanks for sharing. Like um, Sherry just said, ooh, Chris's black here is broken. It's kind of cracked. Um, you can share any time throughout the filming of the live. You don't need to share it right at the beginning. <laughs> you wore your Clark sandals. First of all, I love Clarks. Second of all, I won't be wearing sandals for months and months and months. I'm a little pansy when it comes to getting cold. Third, you're not alone. I have a coworker that has been wearing sandals for probably two, if not three weeks already. <laughs> Oh, you guys are silly. Okay. Go ahead and stamp it. Much less wiggle room on this sentiment piece. Okay. Grab my stamp cleaner. We're almost done with the cards from the kit. Then we're gonna move on to our alternative. And I feel sorely unprepared. I'm very much going to be doing this one pretty well off the cuff. I've got an idea in mind. I'm sure it will come together fine, um, but I'm really gonna be winging it this time. Okay. Yeah, I'm telling ya. She admitted that she's a little crazy, but um, she was ready for sandals. Okay, so if you didn't know, Paper Pumpkin has a ruler on the side of their instruction sheet. Oh, this ribbon, the texture is so nice. I love it. So it says seven and a half inches of this ribbon. So go ahead and measure it up and go ahead and cut it. I'm going to trim 
the ends at diagonals. They kind of show them to be very straightened off, which do whatever you want, but that is how I am going to do it. Now, if, haha, <laughs> ribbon, yes. I'm very excited to see, oh, this pairs so well on this one. I think this one's my favorite. I love the background of the card we just finished, but the all of these pieces together, this one's definitely my favorite card. Okay, so go ahead and either use your glue dots from your kit. I definitely would not use um, liquid glue with ribbon. I'm going to pull in my tear and tape. Just put a couple pieces of tear and tape on the back of this banner here. If refill kits become available for this, I am gonna go all out. I love it. That's what I did. Um, I can't remember who said they, this is one of their favorites, Latokia, and then Deb seconded. Oh, and um, Cindy agreed. My goodness, ladies, I've missed a lot of comments. I'm so sorry about that. Um, I was saying that one of my favorites, this is absolutely one of my favorites as well. However, um, I've had a couple other ones that I really, really liked, including that Christmas one from, ooh, I can't remember if it was October or November of last year, but... I remember they released um, refill kits for it after, shortly after the live that I did, literally like the next day or a day after, so not right away, and I had commented that I was so disappointed that they didn't have refill kits, and then all of a sudden they must have gotten a shipment or their supply in, you know, supply chain issues, they're not a thing, so Going ahead. Hi, Margaret. You've got Kelly tonight, but Chris is watching along. Um. Ha ha. Put it on backwards. Huh. I don't like how they laid this out on the... Oh, you can't even see my instruction sheets. Um. I don't like how they laid this out for the instructions, so my tails are going the wrong way. So I'm going to have to shimmy my piece over to the right more, excuse me, to the left more than theirs, but I like it anyways. Doesn't matter. It looks beautiful no matter what. Hi, Linda. Again, you've got Kelly tonight, but Chris is watching along. Yeah, it kind of works anywhere on here. Then, as stated before, the embellishments on this diagram are a little messed up. So they show, where's my take your pick tool? On the first image, they show them all over the place on here. But they really intend for you to put them two above the mountains and one below the sentiment. Hi, Rose. Isn't this the best? I love tuning in. I remember before, you know, I've always been cr helping Chris. I should really get it in my mind <laughs> when I really started helping Chris with her stuff. I remember designing her logo a long time ago. Um, and then we started with the videos just as the pandemic started and we've been we've been doing it ever since. It's really great. But I find so much joy from being a part of this community and talking with all of y'all and and making cards. Honestly, last week Thursday, my technique Thursday was just a recap of a beautiful card that Deb Norman had made. And I can tell that I didn't get my stamp and fix. <laughs> so I was so excited to make some cards tonight. So Big, little, big. Love it. This one is my favorite. So much beautiful going on. Okay, I am going to bring the three cards back into the frame. 
shoot me a message with what your favorite is and I'm gonna pick up, oopsies, I'm gonna pick up some of my mess while we are letting those comments come in and then uh, we're gonna get started with our alternative. So, where is my box? Ah, I'm not gonna lie. So this background is my favorite. There are so many alternatives that I could do with this. Um, I don't love the leaves on here. Not gonna lie. I also am not a huge fan of this coral. So I'm sorry to offend anyone that has strong feelings that they like it. Obviously, there's nothing wrong with it. This is just my personal preference. But these two, and I think it's because of the background, are my favorite. So I'm gonna leave some of these things out and then we're going to So far, we're getting a lot of love um, for all of the cards. More votes for the first. The third seems to be in second place. And now we're getting a couple extra votes for the second one. So it's a pretty even split. I love it. Okay, sorry. I'm going to sneak in here for a little bit to grab... So much love for these beautiful cards. Isn't that a very unique round piece? I think that would make a beautiful die or something similar to it. Okay, so I've kind of moved some of my extra stuff out of the way. And now we're going to make an alternative. Now, last month... I went like super bonus <laughs> extra credit and made three alternatives. I'm definitely not doing that last time or that this time. That was like paper pumpkin on steroids. It was crazy. But what I'm going to do, and I think you're going to like it. I'm going to kind of take the inspiration. Oh my goodness, guys. So we're going to take a quick break and do roll call. We had 28 people doing the kit with us and or subscribing, purchasing the extras. So Lynn Beasley, Amy Ponce. Thank you so much for joining, Judy. I'm guessing you're on this list. If not, maybe you're a subscriber of your own. Um, yep, there you are, number 24. So these are all people that um, subscribed through Chris and we are going to give away, I'm going to do a random jump number generator of these people. And the person who wins gets a little um, door prize that will come in their next kit that they purchased from Chris. So Lynn Beasley, Amy Ponce, Laura Wood, Karen Stagg, Mo Stites, Elena Fryer, Tracy Gruby, Tracy Seller, Angela Orvis, Janet Desheen, Chris Dudorenki, Char Litton, Sharon Rush, Jamie Collins, Jolene Shry, Terry LaCroix, Lori Kaiser, Kate Pape, Robin Stender, Brenda Kurtwig, Doris Monson, Patricia Gerlach, Patricia Williger, Judy Bobo, Helen Voigt, Marge Haas, Patty Robinson, and Deborah Ryan. Sincere apologies to anyone. <laughs> whose name I just butchered. That was difficult. All right, let's do a random number generator. Four, one through 28. And our lucky winner is number five, Mo Stites. Very exciting. So Mo, next time you purchase a kit from Chris, she will put a bonus little goodie in there for you. So congratulations. Okay. And on to the fun, the alternative. I think everyone likes putting me on the spot for these and seeing what I come up with. I'm sweating a little bit this time. 
So, I am going to case the paper pumpkin card that we just did on Monday, last Monday, because it's ironic. We are um, using the same theme, um, this paper, and I keep forgetting what it's actually called, so I'm just going to look it up. So this paper pumpkin kit is called Beyond the Horizon, and it coordinates with, wow, I don't have this layout all figured out yet. New Horizons DSP. So that is in the January to June mini catalog. And that is what we used to inspire our paper pumpkin <laughs> creation. So Marsha, if you didn't know, Chris and I are first cousins. Her dad and my mom are brother and sister. And she's a couple years older than me, but we have always um, gotten along really well. I used to do a lot of stuff with her mom. And um, it's been so, so incredibly awesome to be um, re-brought together or kind of reunified by this stamping world. So thank you all <laughs> for bringing us back together. Okay. I'm using these envelopes. I can't not. I can't just justify putting an address on these. And sending them to someone, it's beautiful. I'm sure you would all love it. But I adamantly stand on, I could be wrong, but I adamantly stand on that envelopes just end up in the garbage. So why go ahead and, ah, uh, I just, I can't. I'm sorry. I'm getting all worked up. Okay. So let's figure out here. I should have saved the clues from clue one from Paper Pumpkin, or excuse me, wow, I'm getting all crazy here. Um, clue number one from Mystery Night to go ahead and use these envelopes. So I'm going to make two. I'm going to make two exactly the same. Um, isn't it so cool? So yeah, I don't know if everyone really knew that or not, but Chris and I are first cousins. And I literally grew up, um, my aunts and uncles all live within like a very close proximity, <laughs> ironically. Um, but I literally look out my front window. If you've been tuning in all night, you heard me talk about how I sat in my living room and worked all day from home. And out my beautiful window is John and Janet, which is Chris's mom and dad's house, um, they live on a farm and they are like, I don't know, a quarter of a mile from me. It's so cool. So Janet, Chris's mom, is my little courier. When I need something, she brings it out. And when I have something that Chris needs, Janet picks it up. So it is so great. Janet is a blessing. Okay, I'm going to try to make two cards. I need to figure out what card base I'm going for here. So I need to start cutting. Hi, Vicky. Thanks for tuning in. So, ooh, good call. So if you open up the envelopes, you'll see that the printing is just on this piece, not the inside of this piece. And I would assume the same for this one. So here's what I'm doing. This pattern is going to be this piece. This pattern is going to be this piece, which is also on the inside. So I'm going to cut this piece. Now is the time that my brain needs to start kicking it in. Um, and you absolutely could. Yes, Janet is a blessing to all of us. So, it is so funny. John and Janet ha live on a farm. So, they have a beautiful farmhouse. And I used to, when I was in, oh, probably middle school. Hi, Mitzi. 
I used to have sleepovers by Chris's parents' house. Um, so all of Chris and her siblings are older than me. And so I'm guessing this was at a point that all of Janet's kids were out of the house. And my cousin, my younger cousin, she's two years younger than me. Um, we would go to Sam's Club <laughs> with Janet because Janet always had a Sam's Club membership and we didn't. And that was like the big, cool, fun thing was going with my cousins and my Aunt Janet to Sam's Club. And then we would have a sleepover at her house and play games. Chris's family is very into playing games. And we played um, card games and board games. It was so fun. Such good memories. Okay, so I'm MacGyvering these pieces. And I want to make, so this would be five and a half by two. So I'm gonna cut two, oh here, let's trim just a little bit more so I don't have the fold here. Chris, I don't know if you're still watching along, but I don't know if you remember any of that. Um, I think you were maybe in Miami at that point in time. Maybe not quite, but um, I remember that sometimes Tom was home and Tom, Chris's, um, well, Chris has three brothers. Tom, um, is so much fun and he was just always a highlight <laughs> of when Tom would come out. And it's still a highlight when Tom comes. He lives probably two and a half hours away, which is not far by any means, um, but, you know, just isn't around as often. And um, it was just always fun. We'd play games and, um, oh, we'd go to the breadsmith. I don't know if that's like a thing around here or a thing everywhere, but we would go to the breadsmith and it was so delicious. Homemade bread. Okay, so that appears to be, oh, thank goodness, half an inch by five. All right, so let's do, well, that's not great. Not super easy. Okay, now, where's my piece? Here we go. So just a hair off of there. And for those of you that don't believe it, Chris has been, Chris hasn't been a demonstrator for all of those years, but Chris has been doing stamping, um, like having in-home parties and stuff like that for probably 20 years. And of those 20 years, I have been participating in most of them. So mom and I started coming to her stamp parties probably when I was in high school. Again, maybe late middle school. I remember so many stamp sets that I don't know if they were my mom's taste or just my taste, but um, all of those wood stamps that now I'm so glad that wood is not a thing anymore. Um, I love photopolymer stamps. They have long been my favorite. But um, like the crayon drawn Christmas sets, those were my favorite. <laughs> they don't exist anymore. We have gotten rid of, not because we didn't like what the images were, but because wood stamps are so much bulkier and harder to store, we've gotten rid of most of them these by this point in our lives. Oh, I wasn't done. I do need this back. Okay, so then this was three by four and a half. So let's trim this. That 
let's see here. Four. Can't quite get four and a half on this little guy. I hope you guys don't have a problem with me MacGyvering envelopes. I swear every time I do a paper pumpkin alternative and I do an envelope, I apologize because I don't know if everyone else shares those same feelings that I do that um, they don't like sending these envelopes because they're just too beautiful. And if you don't have a problem with it or don't want to... Um, Ooh, I almost cut that the wrong way. Or don't want to um, see these kind of alternatives. It's really not <laughs> for you. And I apologize. Um, but the other thing that I love about this is it is um, an awesome way to get more out of your kit. So like last month when the kit... Um, when I wasn't sold on the contents of the kit, then I had no problem reusing the pieces of the kit to make other cards. But I love these cards. I'm going to make these cards. And so I don't want to utilize these pieces for anything else because then I can't make these cards. I'd be making something instead of these cards. So now, if I just throw these in basic white envelopes, I can make nine cards and then nine other cards with the envelopes. So I don't know, I'm kind of a frugal person, so I kind of look at it that way as well. So now you've got these pieces left from the envelopes that um, you could use for something else, but I am done chopping, and now I'm going to start up. Oh, oh where did my skinny piece go? Oh, in the garbage! Such a bad place for it! Okay, so now I need some basic white. Also, to everyone who is encouraging me not to apologize, thank you. I am a people pleaser, and I always, I'm a very apologetic person that, like, you know, I don't, it's not that I don't mean I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I just, it's just like a habitual part of me that I just apologize for things. It's just part of the gig. Okay, so let's bring in basic white. And now, we've got a piece on the inside that is five by three and three quarters. Obviously, need two of them. That's true. And as a people pleaser, that is the hard part. Okay, so we've got, these are the inside pieces. Okay, that is a piece of scrap. Chris has the most brilliant scrap storage. I love it. I think she has done a live about it. So, um, she keeps every useful scrap. Obviously, there's scraps that aren't all that useful, um, but a lot of scraps are useful. So, now, this white piece does go behind the um, DSP here, but because most of that is tucked away, you really only need a 2 inch by 5. So, let's do 2 inches by five, and then we just saved some paper. Okay, <clears throat> now I need to stop postponing my decision to figure out what color my card bases need to be. So let's move the pieces to the side, and I'm thinking on this one. Okay, so I'm going to have this over here. 
And then this is gonna be over there. So now I need a color to matte and a color to be the base. So I think on this one, I'm gonna matte an old olive and my base is going to be Misty Moonlight. So let's go over to our storage over here and grab Misty Moonlight and Old Olive. Oops, is there a scrap of that? Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, well, I need that on the inside too, right? Yep, okay. So let's go ahead and Okay, now, this is a vertical style open, so we're gonna cut this at four and a quarter and score at five and a half. Then we need a four and three quarters by three and a quarter. And then a mat for the inside. Let's see, I thought I had a scrap here that would work. So let me grab that. Okay, so that is three and a quarter. five, four and three quarters. And then I need a piece for the inside as well. Which is going to lend me to dun, 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 five and a quarter, four and by four. So many pieces. Okay. Then, on this card, not as many options. So, I don't think, I think I want my card base to be Old Olive. I don't know that I want Pale Papaya to be around this though with that there. I don't think I want Pale Papaya to be the card base. So I'm gonna need to bring in a color. So I don't know if I should bring in Misty Moonlight or, is that Soul Saffron or Daffodil Delight? Let's bring in, um, for those of you that don't know, on the back of the instructions, coordinating Stampin' Up colors. So Bumblebee, huh, is that Bumblebee? Must be. Bumblebee, Calypso Coral, Evening Evergreen, Misty Moonlight, Night of Navy, Old Olive, and Pale Papaya is the um, color palette that they're working with. So let's go ahead and oopsies. Make our card base, because I feel pretty confident about Old Olive being the card base. I just need a little bit of time to do on the cord corresponding the accent color. Okay. I need to burnish them. Evergreen? Ooh. I like evergreen. You guys, I would have never pulled that together. Thank you. Okay, so this one goes with this one. Let's pull evergreen. It's perfect, you guys. All right. Oh, no. I don't have evergreen. Let's see if Chris... <laughs> Do you have an eight and a half by 11? All 
All right, let's get started on the other one. And if she has a piece, she will deliver it. Because I think that is what I want. <laughs> Otherwise, there's other great options as well. Okay, so let's pull together this card in the meantime. Okay, so of all of these pieces, we have... Do the inside first. Now I didn't trim this down because I didn't know exactly how I wanted it and I should probably stamp first. So let's see here. None of these lend to having any sort of um, theme because it's just very organic. Um, celebrate best wishes, sending you birthday wishes. Time to celebrate. And then, of course, all of the stamps from the paper pumpkin kit would work as well. So I am going to, on the outside, stamp probably on a banner and kind of tear or diagonal. I think I'll do celebrate and then sending you birthday wishes is what I'll stamp on the inside. And I think I'm going to stamp it in Misty Moonlight. Which is what I should do anyways, because that's the color that came with the kit. See, we're just talking through everything. <laughs> oh, silly. Okay. Oh, I think I hear Chris. You guys, having a stamping, um... Oh, what should I call it? Having like an eye in the sky. It's awesome. I think I just, ooh, that's pretty straight. I kind of just like nudged it a little bit with my finger, but I think it ended up being fine. Okay. Now, let's glue this bad boy down. Vanna White. She's my Vanna White. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I get as much? I'm just going to trim this with a scissor. a little bit too much glue so I'm very gingerly pressing this down because I don't want it to gush out the sides oops and then I got some on the mat whoopsies okay using my glue scissor because I have a little bit of squishiness here Melanie, thanks for joining us. Okay, a little more glue. So I'm here with you on a Monday night, which means tomorrow you can catch Chris. Ooh, daughter's apartment in Florida. That sounds wonderful. My boss is in Florida right now, enjoying some sunshine and much needed R&R. Okay. Chris will be live tomorrow. Well, I think live um, for Tip Tuesday. So tune in. I remember she told me what she's doing and I don't remember what, what the topic is going to be, but I wouldn't even tell you if I could because that would be ruining the surprise. And then I will be live later. Not live. I pre-record mine. Um, but I will be coming to you on Thursday with Technique Thursday. Ooh, I love this color scheme so much. Okay, so the inside of the card is done. Now we're going to glue on all of these pieces. Maybe it'll arrive in April, there you go.
Whoa. Okay. So let's see here. Gotta shimmy that down a little bit. Okay. Then this piece. Getting a little haphazard with my glue here. Did any of you... The green that I'm using right now is Old Olive. And my question is, did any of you craft along with us for our mystery night? So is this layout striking a resemblance to anyone from mystery night? I was a little thrown. I was so excited to do it, but I was hoping no one was going to get um, thrown or have a difficulty with it because there wasn't a focal image and the other thing that was a little um different was that there were two pieces of dsp that you know one of which was basically replacing your focal image so i was hoping that didn't throw anyone off in their um creation so okay then go ahead and Awesome. I'm glad you guys did it. Okay, here we go. All right. Now, this is going to be adhered with dimensionals. I have them somewhere around here. Maybe I packed them away already. Those are all black. All right, so we're gonna dig out our dimensionals. Yay, thanks for doing mystery night, guys. I love it. Uh-oh. <laughs> Where are my dimensionals? That was my nervous laugh, guys. <laughs> oh, there they are, okay. And usually there are extra embellishments as well, so I think I'm gonna use some of them too. Hopefully I don't um, use too many. Okay, so this is a pretty big piece of um, DSP and it is matted. So it's kind of heavy. So we're going to want to be generous with our dimensionals. This is so pretty. And now I get the opportunity to show off this beautiful pattern that I love so much. Okay, and then I'm going to stamp, celebrate. On a little banner basic white so and I think I'm gonna bring it off from this side <laughs> oh that's funny I love it too and I love all the love we're getting for mystery night and I love that Chris and I and our nuances bring you guys so much joy Chris is actually my mom's goddaughter. So um, my mom helps out Chris every once in a while with um, some die cutting or assembling of some cards, which she loves so much and she loves to be able to help out. So it's a family affair. Trying to get that real juicy in some of these um, crevices. And here I didn't put the stamp away like I was telling you guys I need to do. So let's catch up here. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm gonna pull this off to this side. And I think I'm gonna make banner ends and throw just a little bit of ribbon. Now, I don't know if Chris's banner punch for the ends is down here. So I'm gonna freehand it. Full disclosure, I am not very good at doing this freehand. The best way I've learned to do it is to, okay, so like, that's about how far I want my banner to come out. Then you snip down the middle and then you come from one corner to that line you just cut. And then from the other corner. <laughs> it's good enough. It does always turn out kind of a little janky, but it's the best I can do. All right, then I'm gonna put one dimensional behind the end and then glue behind the rest of it because it'll be on the dimensional layer. Wow, I really like it. I am, I am in the hive. I used to film Tip Tuesday and Technique Thursday in my own craft space, um, but I gave up on that quite a while ago. Um, it's a much less controlled environment. I have two kiddos that sometimes you could hear screaming in the background. <laughs> and this is kind of my me time and my peace. Um, kids are at home with dad tonight it has got to go to work, so I'm going to be jetting out of here pretty soon. But um, I'm telling you, if you've never been in Chris's studio, the peace and serenity that it gives you is undescribable. It's amazing. Um, so I encourage you all to come out does different um, retreats and events and if you have the means to come you won't regret it it is so much fun okay I don't like where I placed this last one so I'm gonna try to come up with a new spot for that oh maybe down here okay that's not half bad still not sold but it's okay all right, so that is card one. I don't know that I've heard back from Chris about the evergreen. So I think I'm gonna go run upstairs quick <laughs> and grab it. Unless I can find some evergreen anywhere close by. So what I'm gonna do is lay out our creations for you guys to stare at while I go run. So, enjoy. Chatter amongst yourselves if you yourselves if you would like. And I will be right back.
All right, you guys, I'm back and you're all the best. <laughs> Thanks for your patience. Um, evening evergreen. We got it and it's gonna be the key to finishing this card. So, I just need to cut. Now I need to reframe myself about what sizes I need. And then we'll get them cut and we'll get them assembled. So, <laughs> oh man, you guys are the best. Look at that. Okay, so I need a mat for the inside and for, that was fast. Okay, it's funny that you say that because I didn't run because I didn't want to, as Chris said, take a deep breath before you sit down, otherwise you'll be huffer puffer. I didn't want to be all worked up when I got back. So I casually strolled and I, I have this Midwestern thing where I, um, instead of knocking on a door, I say knock, knock. <laughs> so I said, I, you know, was gliding my way up the steps and I was like, knock, knock. I said, and Chris said hi and I'm like, but I'm not sticking around to chat. I'm, she's like, you're still alive? I'm like, yeah. I said, they're all nice people. They didn't mind. Okay. So, four and three quarters. You guys were totally right. This is exactly what I needed. I don't know. I don't know if it would have hit me without you. So thank you for the inspiration now let's pull this one together so i did like starting on the inside okay so hello i will always be here for you thinking of you congratulations a little note and then these are celebrate with okay so i think for this one i'm gonna do hello and thinking of you. So hello on the outside, thinking of you on the inside. I'm going to grab Evening Evergreen for the stamps. <coughs> Over, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Let me go grab that. I can't find it. Oh my goodness. I think it's on the re-inking pile. So I need to remember to put this one back. I might have a little issue with its juiciness, but that's okay. We always make it work. Okay, thinking of you. When you stamp this, so like I always like to stamp it before I glue the sentiment or the embellishment on the side. However, when you do that, you run the risk of it not being centered because you're eyeballing it off centered so that it is centered when you glue your strip on. So just keep that in mind as you're playing out how it should look. Okay. No. Oh my goodness. This is so gorgeous. Woo! I did better this time. I didn't get glue off the edge. Hi, Jewel. Thanks for tuning in. We're just finishing up our second alternative. We, um, same layout for both, but two different, completely different color schemes. We're having a good time. Okay, so let's get this one cleaned off. Ooh, look at this fun little stamp. And it totally matches the paper. So I'm going to stamp that in the bottom too. <laughs> this is 
a hundred percent stamping on the fly and um i don't usually do this so this is a lot of fun okay now we gotta mat this in evening evergreen Ah, oh, sorry, nice headshot there. Oh, thanks, Holly. I love how this is coming together. Oh, no. <laughs> I should not be on my piercing mat right now. And the paper stuck to it just by like friction or whatever. And it completely slid off center, like very off center. Okay. Now let's get that on the inside. Okay, this is a completely like uncomfortable color scheme for me, but I love it. It is perfect. This evening evergreen is such a beautiful neutral. So good. Okay, then we've got, let's see here, this stamp. I love both of these stamp sets so much. I agree that little um that both of these stamp sets are so good and I like how the sentiments um are very different um so this one's more like celebratory and happy and the other one is more um serious and heartwarming okay I don't think there's an up or down for this one Eee. Okay, that was a little crooked. Okay, then let's glue this little knobber gobber down. All right, quick last nostalgic storytelling. So, <clears throat> yesterday went to potato pancake breakfast. It was a fundraiser for our local heritage museum. And Chris's dad is either on the board of directors or at the very least very involved in the organization, which is great. And um, my grandma used to make potato pancakes all the time and she passed away probably, I don't know, eight, 10 years ago. And so I haven't had potato pancakes in a really long time. So great cause, great thing to go and do. And my son was so excited. Okay. His breakfast was $6 and he ate a pancake. So like not worth it, but it's a fundraiser. So like good, good cause. And it was at his school. He goes to school at a little um, Catholic school that has a 3K program. So he was so proud to take us into his school and show us around. It was so cool. And I was um, so excited to have potato pancakes. They weren't as good as my grandma's potato pancakes because obviously they just, there's no way. There's no way you could replicate the memories and all that stuff, but it was such a good flashback. It, it really filled my cup. So I'm feeling good. Had some potato pancakes, supported a good cause. Here I am a day later making cards with you guys. So I'm just, I'm feeling really good. Ooh, didn't space that out so great. <laughs> Oops. Uh, so mom and I were trying to think 
she thinks my grandma literally made potato pancakes with just shredded potatoes. Like didn't put anything else in them, but then she couldn't figure out what she fried them in. If it was just butter or lard or what it was. Um, Cause we were trying to figure out like, obviously the potato pancakes were good, but they just weren't the same. And so we were just kind of reminiscing and talking about it and trying to figure out, um, cause I think they maybe use some sort of spices. And when you make a bulk batch of them as they had to do for this, um, you can't do them exactly the same as you would if you were just making breakfast for your family. So, um, no complaints whatsoever, but it was just different. Okay, so now I have my hello stamp, and I think this time I'm not going to um, banner the edge. I think I'm just going to cut it at a slant. Oh yeah, I thought I was going to use ribbon. I think I'll use ribbon on this one, because this one has that um, pale papaya. Still, can't come up with that name off the top of my head. Um, oh yeah, I bet you there was egg in it. That would make sense. And... The ones that they made yesterday um, were a lot more crisp or crispy than my grandma's. Um, and I think that's just because, again, they're making them in, bu in bulk. So you just gotta, you probably have a hot pan or fry top that is harder to make them golden. So I do it every year though. So. Ooh, that sounds amazing. I feel like I would like them. How many people out there have no idea what a potato pancake is or has may know of what they are but have, has never had a potato pancake? Just curious. Oh, man, this looks awesome. I'm going to trim just a hair off the edge. I wish I knew how to make potato pancakes. If anyone out there has a recipe that they want to share with me, I'd totally take it. I don't know if <laughs> this is something that is just kind of what people used to make and didn't really take down recipes. Oh, so much love for potato pancakes. I'm so glad I shared. Oh my goodness. You guys, this is what, this is that community that I'm talking about. I, this is so awesome. So there's a couple people out there that are saying they don't really know. You've had them, but not a huge fan. They're very greasy. <laughs> and that's okay. I mean, it was part of the, the um, love. Dawn loves potato pancakes. I do too. Ooh, leftover mashed potatoes. That would be good. Uh, my grandma always used to just um, take like a cheese grater and grate raw potatoes was how she made potato pancakes. Ooh, that sounds really good too, Judy. All right, let's see here. Ribbon scissor. So then I'm just also wondering how exactly you make them. Like, I think grandma just um, fried up, I don't know, butter or cooking oil maybe. Okay. So, instant regrets. I needed an extra layer of, um, extra layer of dimension. So, I'm going to double stack this dimensional at the end. And then, ooh, onion. Mmm, man, now I want more potato pancakes. 
I think they do this once or maybe twice a year. So I'll get them again. But now I'm hungry for more potato pancakes. That's so funny. Okay, so now I double stacked this sentiment. And I really probably should have done that on the other one too. Even though I didn't have rib ribbon under the end. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to really digest all these comments. I'm not allowing myself to read them all as they're coming in because I can't get distracted. But I'm going to throw down a couple embellishments yet. And then this card is done. I'm looking for my take your pick tool. Here it is. Okay, so I'm gonna put one here and two little guys here. And here. Boom, I love it. <laughs> so, either you can use the jargon that I've been throwing out as we go, or if you're interested in making this alternative you can go back to the march paper pumpkin sorry i should it dropped something you can go back to the march paper pumpkin video and clue one will have all these measurements for you so here are all all of our alternatives and i'm gonna go ahead and put these out there as well oh my god you guys <laughs> we're having a little bit of a mess here so what do you think what is your favorite card most of you have already told me what card you like the best of the paper pumpkin cards but now what's your favorite of all that we made so we made two alternatives and three cards. I'm just gonna kinda pack up the stuff as you guys chatter here with me. Thanks, Randy. I had fun. I feel so much better. I was sweating a little bit, not because I ran up the stairs, just because um, I was getting a little nervous. <clears throat> Usually, I um, prepare much more than I did this time, but I am so thrilled with how they turned out anyways. So I hope you guys had a great time stamping with me or just tuning in. <laughs> Oh, one, three, and four. Yeah. Honestly, I like this one better than this one. And I love this so much. So that kind of says something for me. And I feel like I maybe would have moved this up just a hair. But it's okay. Came together. Definitely would double stack the dimensionals behind this banner. Um, maybe would come up with some sort of ribbon. I really like the touch that this ribbon gives. We just partied while you were gone. That's funny. Um, awesome. Thank you guys so much for sharing all of your comments and feedback. I hope you guys all had a great time. Oh, here, let's, let's connect. <laughs> so I hope you guys had a great time tonight, um, making your paper pumpkin or just tuning in for some chitter chatter and, um, fun. <laughs> Um, I really enjoyed hanging out with you guys tonight. Um, you will catch me again on Thursday for Technique Thursday. Got to put my mind around what that's going to be yet. <laughs> um, otherwise you can catch Chris tomorrow. She'll be live for Tip Tuesday and she'll come in live on Thursday night as well. So lots of stamping ahead on the Cards by Christine page. So I hope you guys have a wonderful night and see you later.